Hi, everyone. We're just going to give it a few minutes um, to allow people to get on, and then we will get started. Okay, well, thank you for joining us tonight. We hope that this program will provide you with the information you need to get started squirrel hunting. My name is Courtney and I will be managing the program tonight. This program should be about a half an hour in length and it will be followed by a short question and answer session. Before we get started, I wanna make sure everybody can hear us. On the right hand side of your screen, you should see a tab for questions. Could everyone please note if you can hear us through this tab? At any point in time during the presentation, you can send us questions by typing into this questions tab. Please note, um, we do have a little over 100 registrants tonight, um, so we may not be able to get to everyone's questions. If we don't get to your question, don't worry. We will be sending a follow-up email um, to everybody who registered answering questions that we couldn't get to. The presentation is being recorded and all registrants will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recording and other helpful resources. Okay, so I'm just gonna check really quick here to make sure I'm getting to lots of yeses and I am, so that is great. Um, so it looks like everybody can hear us. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So people hunt for a variety of different reasons, from harvesting their own food, to having a connection to nature, to spending time with family outdoors. If you would have asked me why I hunt 10 years ago, I would have said to spend time with my father. However, given conflicting schedules, my father and I rarely get the opportunity to hunt together anymore, and yet I still hunt every year. After giving it some thought, I hunt for two primary reasons, to support wildlife conservation and to be at peace. Did you know the Pennsylvania Game Commission, your state wildlife agency, is not funded by state tax dollars? The Game Commission is a independent state agency funded primarily by hunting and fur taker license sales. Natural resource sales on state game lands and a federal excise tax on sporting arms and ammunition, commonly referred to as Pittman Robertson funds. In fact, the Game Commission is almost entirely supported by hunters and trappers, with license sales making up half of the Game Commission's annual revenues. So, by purchasing a license every year, I am supporting wildlife conservation in our state, and that makes me feel good. I also hunt because the woods is where I find peace. In my opinion, there is nothing more relaxing than spending a day in the woods. To me, if I am lucky enough to harvest an animal, that is great. The meat will feed my family, and if not, that's okay. I'm just happy to have spent some time outdoors. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I would encourage everyone participating in tonight's program to think about why you want to hunt because this is a question every hunter is asked at some point in their lifetime. Like many huntable species, squirrels can only be hunted during certain times of the year. Pennsylvania squirrel season opens statewide on September 10th, 2022. To hunt squirrels, you need to purchase a general hunting license, which you can do at any issuing agent um, when I say issuing agent, I mean places like sporting goods stores or even Walmart. And you can also purchase your hunting license online at huntfish.pa.gov. 
Please note, if you purchase a hunting license online, it does take us about 10 days to get it to you or to mail it to you. So just consider that um, whenever you're making that purchase. Properly licensed hunters can harvest up to six squirrels daily and have up to 18 squirrels in their possession. In possession basically means that you can only have up to 18 squirrels in your freezer or in your home at a given point in time. Season dates, regulations, and bag limits can all be found in Pennsylvania's annual hunting and trapping digest, which is provided to you with the purchase of a hunting license. You can also find our hunting and trapping digest on our website at www.pgc.pa.gov. There are five species of squirrels in Pennsylvania and three of those species are legal to hunt. These species include the fox squirrel that you can see in the upper right hand corner, the red squirrel in the lower right hand corner, and the gray squirrel. Despite the name, gray squirrels can commonly be black in color. There are two species of flying squirrels in Pennsylvania, the northern and southern flying squirrel, neither of which can be legally hunted in our state. Flying squirrels are primarily active at night, so it is unlikely that you will see one while you're out hunting during the day, but it isn't impossible, so that's why we're noting this. You can tell flying squirrels apart from other squirrels by the bold black line that goes down their sides. They have a white underbelly and they have loose skin between their front and back legs that they use for gliding. Once again, you cannot legally hunt flying squirrels in Pennsylvania. Okay, so what are good places to go hunt squirrels? It might actually be easier to describe places that squirrels can't be found than where they can be. Squirrels are a very adaptable species found in rural, suburban, and urban areas. With that being said, squirrels prefer mature forests with nut-producing trees because these trees provide both food and cavities to nest in. Squirrels will frequently build day nests in the tops of trees to rest during the day. These are a great indicator of squirrels being in the local area. Like all animals, squirrels gotta eat. So acorns from all species of oak trees are favored by squirrels, especially white oak acorns for fresh eating and red oak acorns for storing and eating later. The nuts from American beech, hickory, or black walnut trees are another favorite food for squirrels. Finding fresh piles of cuttings or the outer husk of nuts is a good indicator that squirrels are actively feeding in the area. Collectively, tough to chew tree seeds like these, such as the walnut, again, are called hard mass. Knowing the timing of peak availability of hard mass and planning your hunt accordingly is a good way to increase harvest success. When I say peak availability of hard mass, what I'm basically talking about is when the nut is ripe enough that it falls off the tree into the ground. Squirrels will also eat a variety of soft mass or berries when available in early fall. This can include wild cherries, dogwood berries, crab apples, sumac berries, poison ivan berries, and some seeds like maple tree seeds or pine cones. So all of these things would be, if you see these in an area, these are great things to look for um, when you're looking for a place to hunt. Before you go out to hunt, it is a good idea to do some preseason scouting, scouting and planning. To scout for squirrels, choose a couple potential areas you would like to hunt and determine which of these areas show signs of squirrels in advance. When scouting, you are looking for signs of your game species, trying to get familiar with the terrain and learning um, the animal's behavior in the area. It is often dark when you enter or leave the woods for hunting, so knowing the area you are hunting in can help prevent you from getting lost or from getting hurt. We are going to play a short video on scouting 
to help you learn more about how to scout for squirrels. Just give me one second, please be patient while I get the video up. Okay. All right, so while you do not need camo to hunt for squirrels, wearing camo can help reduce detection by squirrels. However, a lot of people hunt in neutral colors like browns, tans, and greens to go hunting. I've even seen people go out hunting in blue jeans. Um, so camo is definitely not needed. It's, it's optional, but it will help. With that being said, in Pennsylvania, you are required to wear 250 square inches of fluorescent orange covering your head, chest, and back to participate in squirrel hunting. You may want to bring along a pair of binoculars to help you spot squirrels in the distance. However, they are not required to hunt squirrels. You don't, you don't have to have them. And in addition, there are a variety of audible calls that you can use to help locate squirrels while hunting. Using a call can help you get auditory confirmation of a squirrel's location and can help you line up for a good shot. Personally, I have never needed to use a call to hunt squirrels. So again, this is something that's not necessary, but it's something to consider. Um, it can help increase your success. A variety of firearms and archery equipment can be used for squirrel hunting. Archery is not ideal for beginner hunters because it takes a lot of skill and practice to be able to accurately hit a squirrel. So we're not gonna be covering archery tonight. A lot of squirrels, squirrel hunters prefer to use shotguns um, because they allow for versatility and provide the hunter with greater ability to shoot at a treed squirrel if that opportunity presents itself. In Pennsylvania, it is legal to use manually operated or semi-automatic shotguns that are 10 gauge or less to hunt squirrels. You can find the legal arms and ammunition permitted for each game species in your annual, annual hunting and trapping digest. Common shotgun sizes for squirrel hunting include a 410, a 28 gauge, or a 20 gauge shotgun. Make sure you purchase ammunition that matches the shotgun you are using. Because smaller pellets do less damage to the meat of a squirrel, shotgun shell sizes that are seven and a half or smaller are recommended for squirrels. You can also use a rifle to hunt squirrels, which is actually my preferred method because that is how I started out. Um, using a rifle does allow you to harvest squirrels further away, but it also requires more pre precision, meaning that the shots that you take um, at squirrels um, you shouldn't really be moving when you're doing it, um, and you need to make sure that you have a safe backstop. In Pennsylvania, hunters can legally harvest squirrels with a manually operated or semi-automatic rifle that is a 22 caliber or less. Squirrels are more active early mornings and late evenings, making few hours after sunrise and before sunset the best time to hunt. While squirrels only see in black and white, they have excellent eyesight and can easily detect movement. To reduce being spotted, wear camo that blends in with your surroundings and sit with your back against a tree. Listen for squirrels chattering or rustling through leaves. Keep your eyes open for movement on the ground or in the trees. Your shot placement will vary slightly depending on the firearm used, but no matter the firearm you use, Always positively identify your target and what is behind it before pulling the trigger. When using a rifle, be sure to only shoot squirrels with a safe backstop. And what I mean by that is having a tree, a stump, or even the ground behind your shot to prevent bullets traveling long distances in case you miss. If a squirrel presents within your shooting range, you can aim at the head if you're using a rifle, or you can aim at the upper chest if you're using a shotgun. Squirrels will usually scatter after firing a shot, so if you want to continue hunting, expect to wait 20 to 30 minutes for squirrels to become active again. If you go out to an area 
and you've been there for about 30 minutes or more and you haven't seen any squirrel activity. Consider moving locations. A move of 100 yards can significantly change your chances of harvesting a squirrel. Some hunters prefer to move when hunting squirrels. If you choose to be mobile, walk quietly and slowly through the woods, pausing frequently to look around and listen for squirrels. Because you are moving, squirrels will sometimes spot you and become alarmed. If this happens, don't worry, don't give up. Um, there are some tricks that you can do to help get the squirrel back around your side of the tree, which includes you can toss like a stick or a rock on the side of the tree that the squirrel is hiding, and it might help push it back over to your side. If you do plan on being mobile, I would personally recommend using a shotgun because um, you don't need as much precision um, if a squirrel presents itself to you. Okay, after you harvest a squirrel, you will need to process it or break it down for consumption. The minimal amount of gear you need to process a squirrel are protective gloves, a sharp pocket knife, and something to carry your squirrel meat home in. That's pretty much it. If you don't plan on eating your squirrel within a few days, um, you'll want to buy freezer bags or freezer paper to wrap and store your meat in, in your freezer. There are a few different methods you can use to process your squirrel for consumption. And the Arkansas Fish and Game Commission produced a short, easy to follow squirrel processing video a few years ago that we wanna share with you guys tonight so that you can actually watch a squirrel being processed. Please be patient um, with me as I get this video up on the screen. It should only take a few seconds. Okay, so we hope that video was helpful. Um, we'll provide you guys that link to that video so you can reference it later if need be um, in the follow-up email. And we'll also try to share some tasty squirrel recipes with you. Okay, so we hope you found this presentation helpful. At this time, we will take some questions. If you haven't already, please type in any questions that you have about squirrel hunting into the questions tab. With me tonight is Steve Smith, the Bureau Director of Information and Education. Megan Reed, Hunter Trapper Education Administrator. She was on the first video, the scouting video that we showed. And James Herbert from Hunter Trapper Education Management Tech Technician. Sorry, he's our Hunter Trapper Education Management Technician. Sorry, I tripped on my words there a little bit. Um, he was actually featured um, on the very first slide that we opened up with. Um, he was in that the beginning photo. And um, all of these folks are here tonight to help me answer any of your squirrel hunting questions. So if you have some, just go ahead and send them in. Okay, so be while we're waiting for some questions to come in, um, we often, uh, last year when we did this program, um, we got some questions about weather and like time of day, like what's the best time of day and weather conditions to go squirrel hunting. So I'm gonna open that up for the panel to see if anybody would like to answer that question first. All right, thanks, Courtney. Um, this is Steve, and I'll, I'll take uh, the first shot at that, no pun intended. Um, great question. For squirrel hunts, uh, for me, my favorite time to be out there is early morning. I, I find squirrels to be incredibly active just as that sun is, is coming up, um, and that's, that's really the benefit of squirrel hunting. That's uh, what keeps everybody interested is the fact that it's so much fun, there's so much action going on. And that first hour of the morning, uh, I find to really be the peak of the day as far as squirrel activity. Uh, they are definitely out and about, and um, th hardly a minute goes by when there's not a squirrel at least being sighted. So for me, primarily, I want to start out in the beginning of the day. If I can't get out in that first hour or so, um, oftentimes that last hour can be probably just as good. So uh, when I'm thinking about when I'm going to hunt squirrels, it's going to be those uh, either end of the spectrum, either first thing in the morning or in that late afternoon 
evening time period. And I have James here. I'll let James weigh in. James, if you want to talk about weather and how that impacts squirrel hunting too. Yes, weather. It can be a lot. So you'll find squirrels are active really in a lot of different weather situations. For me personally, I'll take anything but wind. I'd say anything above seven, maybe 10 miles an hour, if it's getting up there, it shuts the squirrel activity down because then they can't hear things. And I've learned that when I was bow hunting for deer, they're jumping around on dry leaves and I could not hear the squirrel five feet in front of me because of the wind. So the squirrels will hide in the trees and the wind, because they can't hear, they'll still forage on the ground and up in the trees here and there. But let's face it, everything's trying to eat them. If they can't hear things, they don't wanna get out of their house. I've had squirrel action in light rain, even medium rain. I've seen them out and about in heavy rain. Me personally, if it's really dumping rain, I don't want to be out, but I've been out in all sorts of rain and even snow, like a light snow that'll keep it moving too. If it's super cold, I'm talking anything probably under 30 degrees. Mid 40s, I've had some squirrel action, but when it's really cold and you don't want to be out there, neither do they. They don't weigh that much. They just want to hide in their nest and stay warm. Rule of thumb for me, typically anything but wind. I also like to get out there in the mornings just after a fresh snow. Even if it's on a Sunday and you can't hunt anyway, if I'm dialing in on a new spot especially, I'll walk around. I'll look for those tracks. They have a very unique track in particular areas and you can find hot spot trees is what i call them they'll gravitate specifically towards certain trees then others and you dial in on that with the snow oh there's a nice tree there and then the next morning you have a seat and you see what you can do from there so really rule of thumb is anything but wind and a dumping rain for me and Steve touched on it earlier. I've gone out midday, just kind of have some time to kill in between hunts or fishing sometimes. I've had action in the middle of the day. It can depend on some spots, but if you know they're there, if there's enough food and cover, they'll be there eventually. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you, James. And thank you, Steve. Uh, we have another question about the rifle calibers that you can use. Is it 22 caliber and smaller for rim fire only, or can you use a center fire um, 223? Okay, that's a great question as well. Uh, it is rim fire only, 22 caliber or less. So a center fire, be it a 223, 224, is not lawful for hunting squirrels in Pennsylvania. Uh, the reason being, uh, those calibers, that bullet is capable of, of traveling an incredible distance, uh, several hundred yards. And in addition to that, a squirrel that was hit with a caliber of that size is not likely to uh, give you any meat left uh, to, to use at the end of the day. So uh, for that reason, the regulation has been put in place for several years now. 22 caliber and less in rim fire. Uh, one other fact about firearms for squirrels is a semi-automatic is lawful to use. Uh, a semi-automatic is a rifle that uh, fires with each pull of the trigger. Those are lawful for squirrel hunting, but they are not lawful for big game hunting. Uh, so again, 22 caliber or less rim fire, and it could be a manual, be it a pump, bolt action, um, or even a semi-auto is lawful for hunting squirrels in Pennsylvania. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, I'm just gonna throw this one out there. <laughs> Are there any places that process squirrels for you like they do deer? So I'll jump in on that just really quickly from my perspective. Um, I don't really know of too many processors that will process squirrels, um, but I don't know if anybody else has, has ever um, heard of anybody or if they know of anybody. So I'll open that up. I'm not aware of anyone either, Courtney. Um, I, I don't, I've 
not only am I not aware, I'm not, I can't say I've ever heard of one either. So um, I hate to make a blanket statement, but uh, to my knowledge, I, I think that the expectation is that um, you know the hunter will take care of the squirrel itself. Um, and I know it is intimidating, especially at first, those first couple, couple of times. However, uh, with all the resources that are available, like that video that you showed, it is something that can be uh, mastered very quickly. Um, by, the, by the end of the year, um, anybody who's uh, spent some time in the woods and has been lucky to get a squirrel to will we'll find uh, that it's, it's something that can be done in a matter of minutes. And it's usually a very a quick and clean process as well. It's not like field dressing a big game animal uh, you know, where you're reaching your hands inside the animal to pull out uh, those, you know, the heart, the lungs, the intestines. There's nothing like that with squirrels. It, it's a much simpler process. It's even simpler, I think, than, than uh, preparing a fish uh, to eat. It uh, can be done very quickly and with time, um, anybody can, can master it. So to answer the question, no, I'm not aware of any place commercially that would do it. But I think with, with any bit of experience, um, it's something that anybody can be pretty proficient with. Great, thank you. And I've got some follow-up questions there um, as well, since we're already talking about processing. Um, so do you prefer to field dress in the woods or do you like to take your squirrels home and process them? Um, me, personally, I would field dress or basically um, remove the fur skin um, in the field and then I would take my whole squirrel home and then cut it up further um, for what I'm depending on using it for. Um, but again, I'll open that up to everybody else as well. I tend to do the same thing, Courtney. I prefer to process them right in the woods. Uh, this is something that you mentioned in your presentation. I found that if I'm lucky enough to get a, get a squirrel, it typically takes about 10 to 15 minutes for the woods to calm down and for squirrels, uh, other squirrels to come back out. So what I uh, have found myself doing is I'll harvest a squirrel, uh, pick it up, and I bring with me my, my knife, a Ziploc bag, and I'll just take care of that squirrel while I'm waiting for the woods to calm down and for other squirrels to come back out. And there's been plenty of times where I've harvested a squirrel, sat down next to it, took care of it, processed it, put the pieces away, Put it, uh, put it back in my game bag, and before I knew it, another squirrel was coming back out. So again, that's the fun of squirrel hunting is that it's rarely a dull moment, uh, but the times that there is in between a shot and another squirrel coming out, I try to utilize that and uh, process the squirrel right away. So that's that's how I handle that. Okay. Um, we also had a, another question about any precautions you can take against parasites or fleas on your harvested squirrels. Um, first thing that I am going to say with that before I open it up is now, obviously, if you're, I, I don't worry too much about this, honestly. Me personally, when I'm in the woods, like I said, I will dress them there. Um, but if it is always recommended um, whenever you are processing. Um, game species to wear gloves. So that is definitely one thing. Um, and usually once you, the animal has, you know, died and it starts getting cold, a lot of those parasites and stuff will start to kind of remove themselves from the um, animal. Does anybody else have anything to add there? <laughs> Okay, I think we're all in consensus with, with my answer there. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a great question. Love this question. Um, can you hunt squirrels anywhere, including private property or only on state game lands? Does anybody want to take a stab at that one or you guys want me to, me to take it? I can touch on that. Yes right, and ahead. no. Yes and no. So private property, public property, yes. There's always ifs, ands, or buts. So number one is safety zone and private property permission. If you just walk into a state game lands or a state park, for example, state forest lands, that's already posted. Yes, 
you can walk up in. You don't have to call the office to let them know you're hunting. Private property, if it's your own property, yes. Just look at a map. Legally required is 150 yards, so that's about a football field and a half, for you to discharge a firearm at any game animal. So from where you are standing, when you pull that trigger, if you are 151 yards, for example, from what's identified as an occupiable structure, then that is legal. So for example, you and let's say a neighbor live down the road, you're very close in proximity and you have a patch of woods behind you. If you have the occupant's per permission, just say, hey, I'm checking in. Is it okay if I do some squirrel hunting back here? Even if it's your property, for example, within the safety zone, you have to have permission to discharge that firearm. If you're outside of that safety zone, you're good to go. Another example is if you reside in a borough, so breaking it down by municipalities. So rural townships, for example, is permitted to discharge a firearm. In America, in the entire North American continent here, and municipal government, in a formal city or a borough where I used to live, for example, in Millersburg, you cannot discharge a firearm or bow inside of that jurisdiction. So definitely check with your local municipality first, especially if you're more suburban, if you're very rural, township, definitely check with them first, especially if you're new to hunting. And as always, get landowner permission. If you have a patch of woods behind your house and just walk in and the landowner does not know, that is against the law. Good question. And if there's any follow-up questions from there, feel free to type them in because this can be a multifaceted response. I tried to cover all the bases there. Thanks, James. And you made a great point about the safety zones. So just kind of to summarize or really simplify what James um, was kind of saying is you can hunt on private, private property. If it's your own private property, of course, you have your own permission to do so. You just have to be careful with safety zones and make sure you are within the, the right safety zones and have permission. And then if it is somebody else's private property that you want to hunt on, um, we strongly, strongly encourage you to get permission to hunt on their property. And then also uh, the Pennsylvania Game Commission, we have over 1.5 million acres of state game lands in Pennsylvania um, that is open for hunting and for trapping. Um, so these are great areas to go if you're looking for a place to hunt. In addition to that, um, the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources has a large amount of state forest land, and you can also hunt on some state parks in certain areas of state parks. Um, so that's also another great place to look for places to go hunting. Um, if you are not sure um, where state game lands are near you, um, we do have an interactive map on our website. And I will send a link to that interactive map of where you can go hunting um, in our follow-up email for you guys to make it a little bit easier to find. Okay, another question that we got, and I'm gonna direct this one towards Steve. Um, is there any, uh, I'm sorry, is there an area of the state or a type of habitat that can increase your chances of harvesting a fox squirrel versus a gray squirrel? Okay, I'm going to um, attempt to answer that with the caveat that for me personally, the fox squirrel, at least a pure fox squirrel, has been my own personal uh, white whale in that I've been fortunate enough to harvest literally hundreds of gray squirrels, uh, but the fox squirrel has by and large evaded me. And that is because I think in Pennsylvania, it's more, it's not so much habitat driven as it is uh, parts of the state, uh, geographically driven. Um, both the fox squirrel and the gray squirrel uh, will eat a similar type of diet, heavy on the mass crops, acorns, hickories, walnuts, but uh, fox squirrels tend to be located more in the southwestern part of the state. Uh, in fact, just last year, I was out there 
um, attending a meeting and a Foxborough ran across the road. And the size of this Foxborough was unlike anything I've ever seen in the uh, Southeast, South Central Pennsylvania, where I've done 99.9% uh, .9 of my squirrel hunting. So the Southwest part of the state, um, I believe in the, the Green, Fayette, uh, Somerset counties is tends to be known for having a heavy fox squirrel population uh, that for whatever reason uh, just isn't the same across the rest of the state. Uh, but I think, again, in Pennsylvania, it's more geographically driven than it is habitat uh, because they do tend to have so much overlap and, and fox squirrels and, and gray squirrels, again, will be eating mainly the same diet. Uh, it just depends on where you are in the state uh, as far as your chances of seeing either a fox or a gray. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, we did get another question, and this is a great question as well. Um, do you need to report your squirrel harvest? No, required by law, it's for big game species only, any small game, even migratory birds and fur bearers, for example, do not have a harvest reporting that's mandated. You might get a random survey from our Wildlife Management Bureau, but legally required by law, somewhere in the digest, it reads, if you are transporting the game, you have to have a tag with your name, phone number, contact info on there, but no, there is no wildlife harvest reporting like big game does for example good question thank you james and like james said um, that's primarily for a lot of our big game species which would be like bear or deer um, turkeys and we also have um, snow goose that you should report for and then if you choose to trap um, we also ask for bobcat and fisher and if you are looking into oh an otter i should probably i should i'm sure otter as well um if you are looking to report a harvest you can do so online at huntfish pa or by phone um and that number if anybody does want to write it down if not it is in our digest is 1-800-838-4431 okay so just so you guys know you do not have to report squirrels um I feel like this question, this next question would be for James. Um, can you preserve the fur of your squirrels? It's funny you say that. Yes, you can. And the tails. So for me, I've skinned them all out. I've tanned them. It takes a while. So if you're really getting down into the fine details, I prefer a scalpel, a surgical scalpel. For me, just general, I'll use my buck knife or my little pocket knife. If I know I'm tanning the hide separately, I will skin them differently than if I'm not. So any other questions, Courtney, will throw my contact info out there. Please call me or email me for that. But I'll essentially pull a rectangle of fur out from there off of their back i'll cut the little legs off you know little rectangle i'll dry it out i'll either use table salt or borax recent years i've been using just a box of borax it kind of has a less gamey smell so to speak once it dries out and then the tail as well so i'll take either the knife or even uh, hand pruners any gardeners out there i'll lop the tail off and just put salt or borax over the fleshy part let it sit a couple weeks for the bone to stiffen up or you can even take your knife or scalpel and run that down the length of the bone but be careful if you pull and stretch it it can kind of mess some of the hairs up so a lot of times i'll just leave the bone in but just pull a little rectangle of fur off i've even pinned it to cardboard or just let it sit in a little Rubbermaid tote. The main thing with any fur preservation, keep it out of direct sunlight. For me and my example, keep it in your basement with a nice cool constant temperature and maybe a little airflow in there. And so it's not humid. So maybe if you have a dehumidifier going in your basement, the main thing 
is sunlight and so it doesn't get hot so any sunlight or heat will create a rot and just keep it cool and dry so and i can go into much more detail but email me or call me if you need any questions on that have any questions on that thank you thanks james um do you want me i can just type that into the questions tab and send it to everybody do you want them to have the mentored hunt email or do you want them to have your actual work email what would either you prefer or. Either, either or, or. I'm, yeah i'm fine with it okay i will send that before we wrap up um so here are some great questions too you guys are sending some really good ones um is squirrel hunting really enjoyable enough to be worth the effort compared to big game um this is really similar i got off track a little bit earlier the other question that i had wanted to ask um is kind of like how many squirrels do you need to create a meal so that also can kind of tie in with this um so if anybody wants to chime in there i can take that again or if megan wants to jump in too she's been here but for me, yeah, it's enjoyable. So I'll get just as big of an adrenaline rush if I drop a squirrel out of a tree with a deer. You know, I'll I'll shoot and I'll just sit there still tingling and shaking as if I dropped a turkey or a deer. Yes, it's still enjoyable. It gets me out there, gets the adrenaline rush, gets me using my firearms. And as far as how many squirrels, I've been on both sides of that spectrum. I've cooked them and ate them all individually and i've used five or six typically for me if i want to do a meal especially if i'm feeding other people i'll use half a dozen i've cooked up to 10 in one big pot it kind of depends on what your recipes you're using but for a total beginner if you shoot one what i've done is i'll either slow cook it or pressure cook it or even pan fry it I'll make a little snack out of it with some chips maybe, or I'll break it all down, I'll shred it all up, I'll put it in a salad for lunch, or I'll even make like a little pasta Alfredo with it. Even one squirrel, I get a at least a lunch out of it, you know, with other veggies and stuff for sides. So I've done a little pot pie. I've cooked just one over an open fire in the woods. It's kind of whatever you want to do with it. You can either do a little snack like chicken wings, kind of, or do a whole whole meal. It's up to you guys. And I'll jump in as, as well, Courtney. I think that is a great question. Is uh, the first part of that, is squirrel hunting enjoyable enough uh, to be worth the effort? I, I think it is, and it, it always has been for me. In, and you talked about this at the beginning of your presentation. If, uh, you know, we go into the woods and we hunt for different reasons at different times. And when I'm big game hunting, uh, in the back of my mind always is that I needed a harvest to fill the freezer. So I'm, I'm always, you know, calculating how, how many more deer do I need to kill this year? What's the freezer looking like? Will I have enough to get me through the year? And, you know, venison is a big part of what we eat in my family. So that there's there's more pressure, I think, when you're big game hunting. Uh, you know, it's you're you're worried about the wind. You're worried about being seen. It it almost uh, feels like work from time to time, as opposed to something that we do for fun. And squirrel hunting to me is the opposite of that. When I'm squirrel hunting, I'm totally relaxed. This is a hundred percent just for uh, enjoying being in the woods and observing the wildlife and everything that's happening around me. And it also has the benefit though, of it's making me a better big game hunter at the same time. So I'm, I'm learning how to read sign, how to see, you know, movement, catch movement uh, quickly before it sees me. I'm, I'm finding out where the acorns are dropping that this year. I'm seeing buck rub. So I'm making, you know, mental notes on places to hunt when it is uh, deer season. So it, big game hunting and squirrel hunting they are both, you know, so enjoyable in their own right, but I, I find them to be completely different because it's when I'm squirrel hunting, the pressure's off. It's just all about being there in the woods and and taking it all in, improving my skills uh, with, you know, the mindset that uh, deer season is just around the corner and what better way to prepare than being out there squirrel hunting. Hey, thanks guys. Um... Another great question, and this is a fun question. Um, what do you wish you could go back and teach your younger self about squirrel hunting? 
I don't have to hesitate to answer this because I've been teaching uh, my two sons for almost a, a, about a decade now as they've been coming of age in squirrel hunting. And I see them making the same mistake that I did. And that is uh, something I reinforce to them over and over again is you less is more. So uh, less pulls of the trigger. Don't take those running shots. Don't stretch your ammunition to see how far it can reach. If, if it's not 100% certain, don't take the shot. Uh, wait till you're clearly within range. Uh, the squirrel is motionless and you have a perfect uh, sight picture on the head and then you squeeze the trigger. So if I could go back, I would tell uh, myself the same thing I've been telling my kids of don't rush it, don't force it. If it's not there, don't take the shot. Again, it goes back to just enjoy the experience. Uh, sometimes the squirrel wins, right? Sometimes they see us first and they disappear behind the tree or in that nest and you're just not going to get a shot and you just kind of tip the cap and go on and look for another one. But don't don't rush it if it's not in range. If you don't have a great shot, don't take it. Just uh, be patient and let uh, wait for the moment to be right and then take the shot. I completely agree with that. That hit the nail on the head. Otherwise, for me, this touches on the late season of when there's nothing else to do, you know, I'm either trapping or duck hunting or squirrel hunting is when it's super cold, they're not going to be active because I've sat out and suffered. What you do is you study the peak warmth of the day, typically like 10 to two. Go out that squirrels won't get out of that nest really because they already have a stash of food for the winter. And they're just kind of going out to see what they can get in addition to what they already have. So in the late season, don't sit and suffer because I've done that plenty of times. That's my two cents. Hey, Megan here. Um, I just want to add my two cents in for this one. Um, so I would have to agree with both of you guys, but I think the biggest thing is just really have fun squirrel hunting. Um, it doesn't, I mean, take the best shot you can because you don't want to, uh, see them go down a hole or up a tree you don't want to feel that but you know take the best shot you can and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out that's okay it's not so much about harvesting the squirrel uh, as it is just learning how to hunt and having a good time it's always a great bonus to get the squirrel but make sure you're taking your time and just have fun enjoy that hunt if i'm not enjoying myself if i go out and the weather's bad or um, there's a lot of mosquitoes well I don't have to, you know, deal with that. I can go home and come back at a different time. So uh, whatever you're going to be doing when it comes to squirrel hunting, whether you, you're using a shotgun, a rifle, hunting mornings, evenings, just enjoy it. Thank you, guys. And, and Megan, I completely agree with you there. And I just kind of want to add on, squirrel hunting is a great thing to do with family or friends. Uh, so like going out in pairs or, you know, like a, a, a group and, you know, just sitting out in the woods together or walk through the woods together. It's a great way to just kind of bond um, with the people around you. Uh, so I just say like, that's just, it's, and it's also a, it's a, a great start into hunting. It's a great way to develop skills that you need for um, hunting through other seasons. Okay, so um, we got a couple questions about what is the best firearm to use um, when hunting squirrels. And I think this is really a matter of preference. So I'm just going to do another kind of round robin. Me personally, I, I mentioned this earlier in the presentation, I prefer to use a 22 rifle. Um, that's probably because that is what I started out using. That's what my dad got me started with. Um, so that's what I'm comfortable with. But I do know a lot of people prefer to use shotguns. Um, so I'm going to open that up to everyone else. Uh, yeah, uh, Megan, again, I just want to say I, I personally use a 410. Uh, it's a little bit smaller, um, but it's a lot less kick. And when I'm cleaning my squirrels, I'm pulling out a lot less BBs. So you got to get a little bit closer because it is smaller, but that's my preference. I like 410. I'll hop in there. I use both. As the season changes, I change my gun. Early season into i'd say mid maybe early november there's going to be more tree cover 
That means the squirrels see less in the woods. That means I'll use a shotgun. They'll be in the trees more earlier in the season. They will not be foraging on the ground more. So the squirrels see less far in the woods. That allows me to get closer. And just the first half of the season means they'll be in the tree more. So I'm taking more vertical shots. And for hunter safety purposes, you do not want to take a shot upward with a rifle because the bullet keeps going. It can deflect off a tree branch and travel for a mile. With a shotgun, it's meant to shoot in the air. It's a safer shot. It's an easier shot, so to speak. You just kind of put it on them and shoot. Anytime after, I'd say, bow season for deer, so mid to late November, through till the end of the season, that's typically early to mid-February, then I'll use my 22. So there's a lot less tree cover. That means that the squirrels can see if they're standing on top of a tree multiple hundreds of yards away and you move your wrist a little bit. There's less things in the way, less leaves for them to see you that blocks their angle. So you got to be a little more sneaky. That's when the range with the rifle will kick in a lot more. So there's my there's my uh, opinion on that. Yeah, and, and I'm completely with James. In the early season and in, through the fall, uh, for me, I'm going to use a shotgun. I'll be grabbing a 20 gauge uh, that I've used for years. And part of that is because I, there's a place I like to hunt squirrels that uh, borders a field where the game commission stocks pheasants, uh, where from time to time uh, I might be able to kick out a rabbit. So uh, there is the opportunity for that mixed bag small game in those you know months of October and November that a shotgun is really the perfect, I think, all around uh, firearm of choice. Uh, but similar to what James said, in that late season, when all the leaves are gone, um, I'm with him. I'll take a bolt action 22 and uh, that I've sighted in for longer distances shots, you know, 50, 60, 70 yards where I'd never be able to shoot with a, with a shotgun. But in that late season when there's uh, snow on the ground in particular and no leaf cover, those type of shots are very realistic. So I'll, I'll switch to a, a rimfire 22 uh, after the, the fall hunting seasons are over. Thanks guys. Uh, those are all great, great answers. Um, so I just want to, we got a kind of question that follows up to that. Um, what about using chokes? And then also what shot size um, would you prefer? Yeah, for me, it's not too technical. I just go with a modified. So you buy a shotgun off the shelf. It's going to have just the bare bones modified in there. In my opinion, that's all you need. You can break it down more technical for waterfowl and turkey, in my opinion, but squirrels and even pheasants, really small game with a shotgun, just the generic modified choke that's in there. You can do full choke, but really you're just putting more shot in the animal that you have to pick out all the little BBs and you're spitting it out later. So, modified, bare bones, nothing technical. For the shot size, so the shell size, for me, I've used six shot, which is really just a general small game shell, and seven and a half shot, which is really like a clay bird shell. The main thing with that is how close are you getting? So it has, it packs the same punch as far as the gunpowder pushing it out, but it's just the size of the BBs is what that means. So six shot, seven and a half for me. That's what I got. Okay, right, thank you. Um, we also had somebody who asked ways to differentiate between red and white oak. So I can, I'm happy to take that one. Um, being a former uh, wildlife um, management major, uh, it's a great question. I love those type of questions. Um, the first thing that I would say is to truly be able to identify um, the trees that 
are around you in the woods, it's great to get a little pocket guide. There's tons of tree pocket guides that you can get, ID guides and books. Um, and there's a ton of information on the internet. Um, that way you can truly know what you're looking at and, and what you're identifying. But just as a general, a general overview of red versus white oak. Okay, white oak, if you're looking at the leaves, all right, of the tree, the leaves tend to be more like they're lobed. Um, so the edges of the leaves are rounded um, versus red oak tends to have more pointy um, edges to the leaves. Okay, so that's kind of how you can tell those two apart. However, there's not always going to be leaves on the trees. So they cannot be the only things that you identify trees with. So another way you can help distinguish um, white versus red is white oak tends to have a little bit of like a lighter bark. It's almost like an ash, ashy kind of color um, versus red oak tends to have a darker bark. But probably the best way um, to tell the two apart is if you're looking underneath the tree, right, and acorns are on the ground. Acorns that are longer in length, like long, skinny <laughs> acorns, um, usually like the cap is about a third the size of the total acorn itself. Um, that is most likely white oak. It should also be no noted there are more than just red and white oak in Pennsylvania. There's a variety of different oak species. Um, but as a general rule, if you line up that leaf with the lighter bark and you have a really long, skinny acorn, you are, there's a potential <laughs> you're looking at white oak. All right. And again, having some type of ID guide can really help you there. Um, for red oak, again, it has that darker bark, but the acorn itself is really short and fat. <laughs> um, so I really don't know how to describe it more than that. Um, I wish I had the actual specs for the acorn sizes to tell you, um, but if you're trying to compare one to the other, um, the acorn for white oak, tall and skinny, the acorn for red oak is short and fat. Um, if anybody else has anything else to add, feel free. Nothing else to add. In fact, I was taking down notes myself. I think that was a great explanation. Thank you. I, when I saw the question pop up, I was like, how can I simplify this, you know, um, going through school, like going through college, I had to know uh, like 120 different tree species by the bark alone or by the bud of the tree or by the acorn. And, you know, it's been a long time since then. Um, but I was like, this is what I can remember. <laughs> Um, so I hope that that's helpful, but I would I would highly encourage getting a guide or, or doing some research um, on the internet to get the specifics on that. Because like I said, there's a ton of different species of oak in Pennsylvania. All right, so I'm just going to do one more scroll of questions here. I think we got to most of them, if not all of them. Okay, yeah, I'm just making sure here. All right, so um, everybody, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining in. I loved all of your questions. You were all great questions tonight. Um, we do want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, so we are going to wrap up since questions have kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, before we go, I do want to mention, because I didn't state it in this presentation, in order to purchase a hunting license in Pennsylvania, you are required to take a hunter trapper education course um, prior to purchasing your license. Um, I will send information on where you can take your hunter trapper ed education course um, in the follow up email. Um, you can do so online or you can do so in person. OK, um, and we do have an online version. Um, that is free and in person is also free. Okay, so I will send you guys that information then on where you can take that if you have not already. Um, I would also like to point out that we do have a mentor hunting program in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, so if you have an experienced hunter who has a valid hunting license who is going out and would like to take you along with them and teach you how to hunt, you can go out with them on a mentored hunting permit, okay, um, instead of having to purchase your license. And um, 
that does not require you to have to take a hunter education course first. You can participate in that program for three years, and then after three years, you if you want to continue hunting, um, you're going to have to take a hunter hunter education course and purchase a license. Okay, um, so there's more information about that on our website if you are interested. Um, okay, before I go, let me type in. James is, oh, no, I don't want you guys to see it. Um, I'll send you guys the mentored hunting email as well for any additional questions that you get, okay? All right, okay. Um, I, I do think we got to all of our questions, but I'll scroll through them after we wrap up here just to make sure if we missed any, um, we'll send you a follow-up email answering your questions. Um, thank you again for joining us tonight. I really hope that this was helpful for you. Um, I hope that, that this has given you the information you need um, to get started squirrel hunting. We would really appreciate it if you could let us know how we did and provide us with any suggestions on how we can improve this program by taking the survey afterwards. If you are interested, we have three more Learn to Hunt webinars scheduled for this fall. Two are on archery deer season and one is on pheasant season. You can register, register for these webinars um, on our Learn to Hunt webpage. So that is it for tonight. Um, good luck, guys. If you go out, have fun and hunt safely. Thank you so much and good night. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you. Good luck. All right. Bye.